to showcase uh, this interview on our site. It's called OutsiderGaming.com. And uh, Outsider Gaming mostly focuses on console gaming. And it started out uh, as pretty much a hub for um, sports sports games. But it's expanded into pretty much every type of game nowadays. But that's kind of where it started. That's where our audience kind of lies. Um, and then we've obviously expanded into um, a lot of larger titles. Like I said, mostly console games, a little bit of the PC games, some tech reviews, and and things of that nature. So I guess tell me a little bit about you know yourself, you know what you where you come from, what you do, a little bit of your professional background, and of course the company Akitas. Yeah, for sure. So Ron, as, as, I, as I said before, uh, currently live in New Jersey, originally from Israel. I'm actually engineer by training. I have a master's in, in machine learning. And I moved to the U.S. to do to do my MBA. And then while I was in the U.S., I realized I'm also a gamer myself. So I realized that there is a huge problem in gaming, especially in toxicity, bullying, harassment. Started to research a little bit more. Uh, see that saw that a lot of kids suffer from the problem. So that there is a lot of a, a big problem in toxicity, and you know I wonder what kids what kids do with that. And realized after researching that most of the kids who play are actually bullied or harassed at some point. Estimated that 60% of the kids will be bullied or harassed in video games before they turn 18. And unfortunately, there is no solution. Like if, if you're playing, and I assume that a lot of your audience played, like they, they know there is no solution if you're playing, you know, Fortnite, Call of Duty, a lot of the games, and they're very toxic, not because the game is toxic, because some of the other players are toxic. So what we created at Kidas is, is basically an extension, a software for parents. They install it on their kids' uh, gaming devices. Once they do, we monitor more than 200 of, uh, of the most popular games. And then we can alert parents and also kids if something really dangerous is happening. So if someone is trying to scam them, uh, they get an alert. And if if they suffer from some severe severe bullying, if they're talking with an online predator and have no idea that they're talking with an online predator, sometimes they pretend to be like a 13 years old, uh, you know, boy, and would they gonna get alert? So so basically, what we do is we monitor the voice conversation, the text conversation combine it with the gaming events to understand if something is dangerous to the player and, and alert them accordingly. If something is not dangerous, we, we just don't do, you know, anything that they can play as usual. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. I think I totally agree that, you know, you hear about the toxicity in gaming and issues like this all the time with, you know, the, the lower level stuff, you know, just with bad mouthing or whatever you want to call it, I guess. And then it would move into bullying. And then obviously the higher level stuff of, you know, a predator or a scammer or something like that. So, I mean, for me, when I was a kid, like the first online gaming thing I had, I think was the PS3. And my parents, their initial, you know, the, the way they handled it was just like, no, you're not playing online with other players. You can play with your brother and your friends when they come over and that's it. But now I feel like parents, even if they try to stop their kids from doing that, they might not even have the chance um, because, you know, everyone's so connected now. So it's interesting that that now there's a solution solution to this. Do you find that it's all it's pretty much all parents that are coming coming to you? Like who who are your your main customers and the people that use your product? Yeah, first of all, it made me feel really old and I, because I started to play with PS1 and it was like NBA and it was still Michael Jordan against Carl Malone and, you know, Eula Jeff against the Chicago Bulls NBA. Um, but yeah, that definitely, definitely it's a big problem. And, you know, wanted to clarify, it's not like we're alerting every time, every time someone says, you know, the F word or something like that. That's not, that's not the goal because otherwise we would be alerting parents like every second. And that's not completely the goal. The goal is to to understand if we're dealing with more severe cases, severe bullying that kids really, you know, suffer from, hate speech that can really affect kids, scams, uh, online predation, and only alert about the most serious things. And not alert every time someone is saying a curse word. That's pretty pretty common in gaming. 
terms of in terms of our users, and uh, we currently support only PC games, only Windows computers, and most of the most of our customers are parents to kids age eight to about fourteen. Usually before eight, they're they're young, not you know they're too young to play with other players online. The same as you said, and uh, with sure. your parents not allowing you to play with other players. And after fourteen, they're you know all you know old enough to probably do it uh, themselves. They don't need you know our help with doing it. And at the end, we we see that as you know some kind of a gaming training. So you start playing the first time you play with other players. You you have this you know backup plan called Kidas protect me and uh, installed behind the scenes, and we can alert you if something is happening. We can protect you from other things. And uh, but as you get older. You get more sophisticated. You learn how to behave online in those online communities, in those online games, and then you probably no longer need, you know, the protection. The same as when you start driving, like somebody sitting next to you, and at sure. some point you realize, okay, I'm I'm good enough, and I can drive by myself. Definitely. Definitely. I mean, I mean, <clears throat> to that point, yeah. there's, I mean, there's been studies. I'm sure it's. I mean, common seems to be common knowledge, but I don't know to any everyone. But I know that kids under you know sixteen, sometimes even eighteen, they sometimes can't decipher you know what's reality versus you know what's on the TV and what's what's in real life. So that they don't know you know what situation is presenting danger, what situation can be taken lightly. So in media in general, whether it's entertainment, TV, video games, I feel like kids really do need to be supported because, you know, they're obviously brain still developing. I know everyone's brain develops until sometimes, you know, I don't know for a fact, but 26 sometimes. I'm, I'm not exactly sure. But yeah, kids definitely do need to be supported in this day of uh, media. Yeah, I, I, I completely agree. And, you know, a lot of the parents in the U.S., understand that there are threats in gaming and as you said with your parents like the common answer is like you're not playing anymore and and that's actually what we had with with parents using our software so when we initially started the the company with our first users they got an alert about something happening to your child and their first reaction was like their child is not you're not playing anymore and we know that because you know our system identified that the child didn't play you know the week after and the week after and then we realized that with those kind of parents and it's most of the parents we need to provide some recommendations they don't really know what to do with those scenarios so we we partnered with children's psychologists and bullying experts from from CHOP, the children's hospital of philadelphia and they created a uh, tailored recommendations for each one of our you know recommend each one of those are detection so if 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 your child is talking with an online predator you're probably like terrified and don't don't really know what to do um, you're going to get from us, you know, a bullet list of what are the things that you need to do, like who do you need to call, how do you need to communicate it to your child, because it's a lot about development and, you know, the age of the child. Like you cannot talk about online predators with an eight-year-old the same as you talk with, you know, a 14-year-old child. So you need to, ask, to understand what are they able to perceive at this age and, and direct, you know, the conversation towards, you know, those topics. And, and the goal of Kidas is not to be, you know, a spy, you know, on kids. It's to be a conversation story. Say, listen, I received some alert about those situation. Let's talk about it together. Let's figure it out together. And let's solve it together. It's not about me spying on you. I'm not getting the full conversation. I'm not getting a transcript. I'm just getting an alert, a summary of what happened. And it's not like I can listen to all of your conversation, read all of your text or something like that. I know a lot of, you know, some of the parental controls allow you to do that. We're totally against it. Like we're, we don't allow parents to to read all of the their kids' you know, text or listen to all of their kids' conversations. We 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 want kids to have their you know personal space. We want we want them to do it safely. So so how do, how does that does situation that go is? then? Um, if you had to identify a common like step by step when um, you know a situation arises from you know in game to, to after the game's over and then you know coming back to playing 
where where is the intervention who is intervening what is the notification like take me through a little bit of that like step by step i guess yeah so so let's take let's take like a, a financial scam that's like a very common thing Let, let's say that the child is talking with someone and he convinced them he convinced the child he or she convinced the child the scammer to share some private information private financial information it could be anything from you know, credit card numbers. We had a, a lot of kids sharing their parents' credit card numbers because someone convinced them to purchase virtual assets. Could be social yep. security number. It could be password to their account. Hey, let's switch virtual assets. I'll, I'll give it to you. You'll give it to me. In, in those cases, parents are getting an immediate alert, an SMS alert to to their phones, uh, as well as emails, and and they they're getting recommendation or what of the mo what are the most immediate things that they need to do right now to solve the situation right now then in the weekly report they're getting every begin every beginning of the week they're getting a, you know a full report with trends how much time your kid is playing what type of games what new games you we recommend parents to play with their kid or to read about so they can be you know, be more aware of what is happening out there. So in those longer reports, those weekly reports, they're getting more recommendation for the long run. So basically, what conversations should we have? What are the next steps? Do we need to to do change some of the settings within the game and so on? Interesting. And is there, uh, I guess, anyone from your team that is there like a conversation that happens at some point with with the parents or with the kids or is it mostly just like you guys are your team is advising the parents and then it's up to the parents obviously to you know make sure their card information is safe or make sure their their kids not talking to someone they shouldn't be talking to things like that yeah so so we we send them the information and they, they read it on our website you know our customer support is always open and we, we had a, a few cases of parents asking us more and we of course help them but but the goal is to provide them enough information and to leave the choice to them like you we send you what is the what the what do the expert recommend to do uh, experts who are children psychology uh, bullying experts now you can choose if you, you follow the recommendation or maybe uh, you know it's a unique situation and you would do you want to do something else but at the end, you are the parents. You are the parent. You are responsible for your kids. We're not. We're here to provide recommendation. We're not here to force you or to to tell you what to do. And parents should be parents, and should, they should do the parenting. It's not on us. Absolutely. No, that's that's super interesting. So I guess for for um, our our sites that Treasure Hunter works on, like we said, I said I have, we have that outsidergaming.com, and then um, we have leaguefeed.net, which is all about obviously League of Legends, but other PC games and PC gaming technology. So now I'm thinking about that audience. <clears throat> what kind of games do you do you mostly, or yeah, I guess what kind of games are the kids playing that you're offering these recommendations to? Yeah, it, what, what are you finding most often that they're playing? Yeah, so we're finding a lot of Call of Duty, Fortnite, Minecraft, Roblox, League of, League of Legends is, a, is another big one. A lot of, you know, NBA, FIFA, we see a lot. And so so those are the top, the top games, but, you know, it changes. It changes within demographics. So even in, within the U.S., you see that, you know, within specific regions, some games are more popular than other games. And also within child, you know, age range. So the games that are played by, you know, eight, nine, ten year old are completely different than the ones that are played by, you know, thirteen or fourteen years old uh, kids. And so completely different. But you know, that's one thing that we we do share with parents, so they can see their get the gaming habits of their child, but they can see also how is it compared to other kids in the relevant age range. So how much time. Are they playing the other kids? What type of games are they playing? How many alerts did they receive, like on average, and, and so on? And we we also just integrated the connection to the gaming database, the parent gaming database, so okay. we're able to see their gaming activity, the kid gaming activity, and recommend parents what are some other games that they should recommend their kids to play. So, for example, some parents, you know, the same as your parents, 
you know, their kids play multiplayer games and they think that eh, maybe my kid should play more single player games. So we have the ability to recommend them. OK, here are some single player games that are pretty similar to the multiplayer games that your child is playing. Or maybe their kids are spending a lot of money on in-game purchases. So we have the ability to recommend, hey, here are some games that are pretty similar to what your kid is playing, but don't have in-game purchases. Those kind of things. Interesting. And so you said um, you just support at this point um, PC gaming on on Windows computers usually. Yeah, and and we we support more than two hundred games. We have the full full list on our website. I can send you the link. Very cool. Do you guys have any plans to expand into the console realm? Or um, I know, I mean, there's now there's VR gaming. Um, well, do you have any expansion? goals there i guess yeah we, we actually created a proof of concept for xbox in the past and but decided for now to focus on pc gaming i think the, the you know the next obvious place for us would probably be cloud gaming uh, because we see a lot of players especially young ones who don't have the you know the right equipment they don't have strong enough computers they're probably using their school computers using <clears throat> those to use those services or even playing that on on TV, so I think that's one one place that we we're looking to expand to, and also mobile gaming, and definitely console gaming as well. At the end, we want kids to be a hub for for parents. You can connect all of your kids' gaming devices and see all of the activity in one device or in in one place in one dashboard, and and control everything from from there. Interesting. Um, I guess I'm sure you guys have, you know are are conducting you know research on on the gaming industry all the time. Where do you see the industry going, especially for the kids, um, I guess, between the, you know, the young guys and girls who, you know, five, six sometimes are playing games. And you said, you know, seven, eight till 16 ish, I'm sure. Where do you see that, that age range and their interests now and going into the next five, 10 years? Yeah, so so first of all, we see a lot more kids playing. So currently it's about 90% of the kids in of the boys in the US and 70 something percent of the girls in the US play some kind of game. So it could wow. be either mobile games or console or PC games. What we see, we see a lot more games with the uh, voice chats. You know, usually before, I think in the last you know, two or three years ago, games that were directed towards younger kids did not include voice chats like you can think about roblox and um, but even roblox they added voice chats you know a few a few months ago and i think a lot of those games going towards voice chat uh, it creates a little bit of problem for them because of copa the children online privacy protection act you need to make sure that children are not sharing you know private information you're not processing information without the parents consent but definitely seeing a lot more games going for voice chat we've seen kids maturing with the platform that they started to play the younger kid so we see the average age of minecraft roblox even fortnite and getting older and older as kids start to play but just don't leave those games and continue to play as you know as teens and even adults and so we think that it creates some some threats to younger kids who, who start to play those games because if you know four or five years ago most of the people playing roblox were almost at the same age range now you're going to see a big violence a violence in, in in the age range so you're going to see some kids who are seven to eight and you're going to see some people who are like 25 24 playing those games so once you have those those things like imagine a club like you you, you wouldn't imagine a club a dance club with you know someone who's 25 and someone who's eight or nine dancing in the same you know place and you know that that's the reason that you you have some age limits for those things and i think that's what has happened virtually you know in the metaverse in, in those some of those places in fortnite in roblox in minecraft in many of those games 